Do you believe in magic? Welcome back again, my friends, to Most Magical Edition. Yeah, so <laughs> this time I'm painting up Merlin from Nocturna Miniatures. The main reason that I wanted to paint this up uh, was to create this, in the words of my friend Josh, 90s poolside reflections. So you can see this emerald green glow coming up from this reflecting pool on the model and yeah, just kind of create this very stoic, placid, teeming with magical kind of scene and who doesn't appreciate Merlin and Archimedes. I don't often get to do this on a lot of projects, finding ways to pull ambient light in. Of course, there could be just some offstage light source, but it's nice to have the element included on the base, and this is a fun way to pull everything together. So without any further ado, from bottom to top and inside to out, let's start working on our wizard. Okay, incredible thick base, beginning with a mixture of black and deck tan to create just kind of a, a warmer gray. I mean, you can just make a mess on this. I'm just, it's wet blending, it's stone. I'm trying to create textures that aren't sculpted there necessarily you know there's a lot of subtleties to be playing with and all these hints and hues of tone so just taking that black and deck tan mixture wet blending some green brown some german uniform gradually raising it with deck tan but keeping those greens involved you can you know kind of layer things back and forth you can be glazing and letting playing with the transparencies and the irregular drying patterns from bad dilution but yeah, nothing really to uh, spend a whole lot of time on or write home about. I laid down emerald green on the uh, flat reflecting pool and then started, you know, balancing it. those mixtures that I used on the stone. I started to pull some emerald green into that and just threw it up on certain facings of the rocks. I'll get things chiseled out later, but for now, just have a foundational setup. Next in line, it was time for his crusty brown robes. I took a mixture of black brown, a little bit of black, just making the deepest possible brown I can. Black brown, German camel black brown is the full name, but that's that's a mouthful. It's just a nice deep chocolatey brown, darkening that up with some regular black. And yeah, you know, as, as you get closer to the source of light, adding a little bit more emerald into that mixture, kind of bringing the OSL through the piece. Uh, just keep in mind that a certain amount of the light will be blocked by the ledge created by the from the stones. But once I had that soupy brown established I started mixing in some flat earth. It's just a kind of a nice slightly warmer, slightly chestnut rich brown. Funny translation, it's a Spanish company and there's a bottle of paint called flat earth but it literally means flat earth tone and also then including some deck tan to brighten things up once again. I want to save the final white tones for my chosen brightest areas, so I've been using deck tan in, in place of that. It's cold by the coast. Chopping right along, I wanted to work on his furry shawl as well as Archimedes. Uh, for those two, you know, I wanted to create kind of a pale white take. I think I can use the same tones on his hair as well. So I was using a little bit of blue-gray with a touch of that German uniform brought in there. I just, I just like including some green. I want this to look dark, earthy, and you know, I want every, all the colors to fall back so that magical reflective pool can really come to the forefront. But yeah, those mixtures of blue, gray, and German uniform. And then I was adding my black, you know, brown, emerald green, that origin mix, the soup that I was using on his robes. I used that to wet blend down the shadows on the, the fur and the feathers. I added white to this, but I added white very slowly, you know, just a little pinch at a time, kind of let it dry and desaturate, make sure things are, you know, very firm, um, but you don't want to overdo it. I want the model to read overall, I want it to stay very dark again, so that bright light, which is the feature, really stands out from the model. Uh, at this point in the recording process, I also realized that I had my digital zoom on, so let's take that off and maybe things will be a little less crunchy. Merlin's Shaft. What a mighty long staff it is. I used a base coat of black brown, bringing it up with a little bit of flat earth and deck tan. Oh yeah. Real simple, but worth noting. <laughs> Get that firm sh- alright, I'm done. Now for the skin, I 
I have such fun whipping up skin tones and I feel like I can include the same colors and come out with uh, different results, you know, just small variations, a little less salt, a little less sugar in your recipe you can create these subtle varieties that you find within regular human flesh tones. So every piece is an experiment. For my base layer, I used a mixture of hull red and that German uniform again, just kind of creating a, you know, the hull red combined with that murky green just created a real kind of neutralized red tone. You know, I had that like red of flesh, so it, so it still looked alive, but the green really, you know, added a little bit of numbness into the situation. I wanted to make sure to have a lot of numbness overall. But from that mixture, I gradually added in some amounts of buff. This is a nice, it's an ivory tone, but I feel like it includes just a little bit more yellow, so it's, it's great for raising up flesh tones and then finally bringing a little bit of white into that mixture. And once that, that flesh was all stretched out, it was time to go back in and kind of accent some of the mid-tones and hues. You know, just pull in some of these softer shadows, so just using a little bit of that German uniform, maybe a little hull red, just as I see fit, you know, just a little more hull red and the, the deeper shadows, a little more of that green tone for the mid-zones. And yeah, his flesh was quite well rendered. So now my main colors are established. It's time for some blending. You know, everything has been kind of roughly wet blended up, a little bit of layering here and there, but it's time for that artistic touch. You know, you want to look and kind of see where there are some weak spots or some certain points of focus and start smoothing things out. You know, I've got my first draft of this sculpture kind of chipped away and now it's time for a little fine sanding and rendering. Any metaphor that doesn't actually say painting. That'll land well. So I began kind of exaggerating the lighting uh, on the robes, you know, as, as they stretch upwards. I wanted to bring a little bit more deck tan highlighting in place. You can see the, the wavy, you know, a little bit more of that emerald coming into place, getting those wavy lines to come through. But yeah, just a, kind of a general doctoring up of, of all the, the established areas and setting the stage for that all-important green glow. Ah yes, the reflecting pool. So uh, mainly this was established with some emerald and verdigris. Just wet blending those two together as it came closer to the shore, adding a little bit more of that verdigris, verdigris. This very light, bright cyan green kind of tone. But yeah, just wet blending it out into the emerald and then as you know, these gentle waves are kind of sloshing against the shore and being broken by the few odd stones sticking up. I could kind of accent that with some just very gentle artistic lines. You know, nice and sharp. It doesn't actually look like water, yet it does look like animated water. Most magical. And yeah, just be careful where you, where you choose to bring up your brightest areas within that. You kind of want to a line of you know reflective uh, accumulation running through the rings from side to side. You don't want to highlight it all uniformly or you're just drawing circles. You want to have a little bit of depth and flow to everything, a little variation. Uh, as it extended away from the shore it didn't look quite deep enough so I brought a little bit of dark Prussian blue into the equation but only a little bit. I want this to look very very bright and light is light. Avoid deep shadows and you're trying to make something look like it is casting light so it appears to be, you know, much brighter. Avoid the depth, you know, you don't see many dark spots in fire, do you? Oh, hello there. I am recording this a little bit out of sequence. I seem to have had some lost footage. But the memory is not lost. That's all secure. Steel trap. So, the best part. I, I can't believe that this uh, narration was lost somehow. But yes, the light casting up on the model from the reflecting pool. How do I do this? Um, you want to consider that the light travels a certain distance up the model. In this case, about two-thirds upwards. And as that light travels up the model, it's going to become weaker and softer as you get further away from the source. So I'm adding more and more of that original base brown, sometimes flat earth, into my emerald mixture. And down towards the lower areas, more cyan is being involved again. Um, also, 
I'm edge highlighting the lower facing of everything. You know, the lights, you hold the model upside down. If you're used to doing the zenithal light sourcing approach, flip it upside down there. Just highlight what is now your upward facing angles. And again, you want to make sure that they gradiate and, you know, continue to become brighter as it leads towards the light source, just kind of feeding into that overall effect. It was a little bit of a, it was a bit of a tricky dance getting those actual wavy lines, you know, the kind of crisscrossing. Um, it was a balancing act, but that was the fun part. That was something new. I was going back and forth on that, and yeah, just this is the part that takes some patience. Just the gradual layering and accumulation. You have to lay down one single wave of color and decide if it's if they're numerous enough. And you know, as as you get further away from the source, the uh, the waves I think would also dissipate in their effectiveness. So there's a lot to control and manage there, but. That was the fun part, and seeing is believing. You can see the overall effect and how it was achieved with a relatively simple amount of colors. All right, let's get back to the original recording. And Shazam is a magic man. Everything is established, it's time for that sweet victory lap. I've got a little Mod Podge dimensional magic. It's a nice heavy gel medium. And just throwing a healthy amount down over that reflecting pool thought about blowing upon it when it was semi-dry to create some wrinkles and waves, but I think the way is already painted in there, so I'll leave that off the table this time. I'll have to paint the side of his plinth, kind of give him a once-over once again just to make it look better, but there is nothing that you haven't that's going to be done that you haven't seen already in this video. You know, you, you put things down, you come back, you look at them again with a fresh set of eyes, Sometimes things can change. Sometimes you have a new perspective, a fresh idea. Sometimes you take a photo of your model thinking it's done from a different angle and you see kind of a, some new opportunities for light situations. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was a lot of fun to put together and I'm continuing to kind of uh, stretch my mind figuring out you know this kind of new setup for creating tutorials and the storage capacity and technology involved. It's going very well. I'm excited to get on to even more extravagant projects, but Merlin was a fun one and I wanted to create a very solid ambient light project. So please let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Ask any questions you may have. As supporters on this Patreon, I'm always happy to hear from you. Until the next time we meet again, remain unchained. Wait, where are my glasses? Much better. Remain unchained.